Okay. So we'll get started. Just want to read from Psalm 19. Okay, Psalm 19. And um, I mean, this is something that we uh, know. Um, this verse, Psalm 19 and verse 14. Okay, Psalm 19 and verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Okay, the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So the psalmist is um, saying, okay, this is bringing to the Lord a few things, and he's saying, okay, let this be acceptable. Okay, which means that um, these are the areas which can, which have the potential to be not acceptable, right? Uh, so he's, first of all, he's saying, let the words of my mouth, okay? So words of my mouth, then whatever words I speak, let it be acceptable to you. Um, so the words that we speak, we can hear, others can hear, it's very, very clear, okay? And then he goes on to say, uh, meditation of my heart, okay? what I ponder on, what I dwell on, what I think about over and over again, okay? Let the words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Right? So saying, God, um, uh, because we, we know that the Lord knows everything. Nothing is hidden from his sight. Nothing is hidden from his eyes. But many times, you know, uh, we think that the meditation of our heart is very private and it's not really visible. It's not really, uh, you know, something that, um, that others can know. Yeah, and, and it's true to some extent. But the fact is that the Lord knows, and so the Lord is, uh, so the so the psalmist is saying, Lord, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And um, you know, it's interesting. So He says that let it be acceptable in Your sight. Okay, uh, the meditation of my heart, words of my mouth, let it be acceptable in Your in Your sight. Meaning, um, it's almost as if the psalmist is saying, you know, Lord, You see it. You know, what I think, what I imagine, what I dwell on, You see it. Right, so he's saying, let it be acceptable in your sight. Let it be acceptable to you. Right, so, um, so, uh, so the thing is for us to say, God, you know, let there be a greater awareness of that. You know, um, whenever we are with people, we are aware. Okay, there are certain things that I should say, certain things I should not say. Okay, maybe we have with children, and then you know, or with the adults, or with, you know, and then we we sometimes we change our behavior according to that. Right. Um, okay. Teacher, teachers there, or you know, <laughs> pastors there. Okay, maybe I, I, I will not use certain words. I will not say certain things. Church friends are there, but then when we are with family, when we are with, you know, when our guard is down, okay, what are the words that we speak? When our guard is down, really, what is the meditation of our heart? Right. So the psalmist is aware that Lord knows everything. In fact, the previous um, you know verses talk about that, right? Verse twelve says, uh, "Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults," right? Which means that it is there within. I, I sometimes even I'm not aware of it, but it's a fault. It's something you know, um, not known to others, not known to everyone. But Lord, cleanse me from that, right? So let's um, this morning, you know, uh, let's just pray, saying, Lord. Um, make us sensitive to that sense to give us that sense of uh, um, it comes down to Lord um, just awareness of your presence you know uh, acknowledging your presence at all times and so accordingly our meditation the meditation of our hearts also uh, that we are aware of uh, we discern and we stop certain things and we allow certain things right Father we thank you Lord that um, you are a very present God, Lord, very present, Lord. Um, day in and day out, you are with us, Lord. And what an awesome privilege. What an awesome privilege, God, that we are never left alone, God. That you are always with us. And so, God, this this morning, Lord, even as we read your word, we, we are aware of your presence, Master. Lord, aware of your presence, uh, Lord, in our meditations, Father God, the meditations of our heart, whether it's edifying, unedifying, whether it's full of faith, Full of unbelief, 
Lord, whether it's angry or Lord, whether it's peaceful, Lord, whatever it is, you are aware of it. And Jesus, this morning we ask, Lord, that uh, may we have that awareness. May we have that awareness of your presence, God. May we have that awareness of the things that we meditate on. And Lord, we pray that you would quicken, Spirit of God, that you would quicken to our hearts and we'll be quick to hear. We'll be swift to hear the voice of the Spirit. And even as your word says, let him who has a ear hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so may we be people who will be swift to hear. Sharpen our hearing, Lord. And Lord, strengthen our doing. Lord, that's something that we pray, God. Sharpen our hearing. May we be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. And Lord, strengthen, empower our actions, Lord. May we act on conviction. May we act out of truth, Lord. Never out of pretense, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so we've been looking at um, uh, the qualifications of the preacher, right? The, we looked at the call of the preacher and we looked at um, you know some of those signposts kind of revisited. And today, uh, let's look at uh, the qualifications of the of the preacher. You know, what is it that qualifies uh, the preacher? Okay. So um, when we look at the epistles, we see some of the things that Paul writes to. Um, to oops, just one second. Sorry. Yeah, when Paul writes uh, in the epistles, and maybe you are looking at it, uh, you're studying this. You know, when we look at the ministry of the pastor, evangelist, uh, teacher. You know, we'll, we'll be studying that also. Um, but let's, um, yeah, let's just take a quick look at, um, yeah, let's see, uh, First Timothy chapter 3. Okay, First Timothy chapter 3. And um, a few verses from... Uh, from the beginning of the chapter, so, right? It says, this is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own, own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into re reproach and the snare of the Devil. And then it goes on from verse 8, talks about the deacons or people who are looking into the administrative um, tasks of the church. And he talks about some of the qualifications there as well. And there also we see that in uh, as per this list and the next one, he says that uh, there's a lot of attention to character, right? A lot of attention to character. And it doesn't mean that skill or ability is left out. He talks about that also. Okay, so um, so in this, what we saw, we is you know there is skill and ability mentioned. Can you just tell me where, from verse two, verses one to seven, right? where does he talk about skill or ability? Sorry, um, uh, able to teach, right? So that's verse two. Um, and the last part of verse 2 says, able to teach. So there he talks about ability. Anywhere else? Yeah. So uh, one who rules his own house well, that also talks about ability, which means he takes care of the family or the household and he does it well. Okay. So these two things we see in this in these seven verses um, where he talks about the ability uh, and it says that one should be able to teach one should be able to you know take care or rule his household well 
okay uh, and the rest of the things talk about character okay talk about how the person is how the person should be on the on the inside and how the lifestyle should be okay so it's uh, you know these are important um, things that we see let's go to titus Okay, it's um, uh, chapter one itself, verse five, right? Verse five, he says um, to Titus, "For this reason, I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city, as I commanded you." So this is so you're saying, to, uh, Titus, that you go appoint people, appoint elders. And this is how they should be. Verse six onwards, man is blameless. You know, you see almost a ditto, a repetition of the qualities that he listed to um, uh, Timothy, right? Um, so he says, must be blameless, steward of God, not self-willed, everything, right? Self-controlled, etc. Um, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict so there comes the aspect of teaching there comes the aspect of you know um, doctrine and by sound doctrine able to exhort meaning encourage teach etc okay so we see similar things as the if you could say the qualifications or the characteristics that a person needs to have right and it's a general you know we can say it, it's not just to preach but you know it's to be a person who's a minister Right, who's handling the word, who wants to minister, who's in, interested in, you know, uh, ministering uh, the word of God, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm just sharing the notes here, right? So, so one of the basic, some of the basic things that we see, uh, and it might seem like, okay, isn't this very, very basic? Isn't this, uh, you know, isn't this understood um, that one person has to be like this? Okay, uh, look at the list, okay? This, uh, this theologian called Unga, he gives spiritual qualifications. About seven he lists down. Okay? The first one is that, uh, he uses the word expositor, meaning one who teaches, one who uh, you know preaches from the word. Okay? Saying the expositor as a regenerated believer. Okay? So this is, um, you know, some decades ago, the person is writing, right? Uh, and he's this theologian, he's put together these thoughts. So so which means that there was a trend and even also today there is a trend for people to desire to be preachers or to get into ministry as a profession okay just like any other profession okay and sometimes it is like okay i'm not getting into any other let's say uh, education institution or any other profession so let me try ministry. Okay, sometimes that's the line of thought. Okay, and then uh, people come into that. So um, it is sad, but uh, as a result of that, there's a lot of damage that happens to the church, right? There's a lot, and and some of the churches that um, you know I've been in, and also uh, one of the church, uh, the church where I was part of. Going through a lot of difficult times right now, okay, because of this kind of mentality. You know, why did the person? Maybe at point, or some point, they were sincere, but then the real motive for getting into ministry seems to be, you know, what the Bible talks about, uh, you know, unlawful gain. Okay, uh, the motive is not I want to serve, but motive is what can I get. Um, so he, and also so at a very basic level, you know, there is no uh, the person is not a born again believer. Okay, so some of us coming from charismatic churches or you know that kind of a Pentecostal background, um, for for us it might be you know how can even this be possible? How can this be possible? Shouldn't you know only a believer will actually get into you know, ministry or go into theological training. Not so, right? For example, you know, this happened, I don't know if I shared with you, but this happened many, many um, years back when in our church, uh, I mean, back then, um, which I was part of. So they invited um, uh, a, a worship leader, 
you know to come and lead worship teach preach worship workshop etc so he came and he led and it was very anointed you know very simple very anointed and uh, i think people's hearts were really touched right so when he gave an altar call for people to accept the lord as savior so he just very clearly said you know you can be in church you can be do uh, doing several things but not be born again you okay, not really receive the lord as your savior so he shared that and then he gave an altar call and guess who was the first person to receive the lord the pastor right but praise god he had the uh humility and the boldness to do that right so he he didn't think okay oh i'm a pastor what will people think you know i'm the i'm i'm the leader of this particular church and what will people think if i stand up and if i say you know i'm not yet born again no, no he he actually did that he had the humility to say hey this is something new this is something that i want and therefore i'm going ahead and he became a believer then right and uh, we know from our interactions we were the youth then then so it was a different pastor that we knew you know because now his whole ministry and everything changed from then on right so uh so this is the basic thing and the reason is this there were people there are people who get into ministry for the sake of ministry for the sake of it being another degree another profession and so on so you know this um you know theology is just put down saying it must be a regenerate believer okay so okay the next one uh as a spirit filled and spirit taught okay so this is this is also something that we uh, we need to emphasize emphasize or um we need to uh, you know kind of ensure uh, being spirit filled and spirit taught okay so now uh, if you look at uh, Uh, if you look at acts chapter um maybe acts chapter 8 okay let's go to acts chapter 8 okay acts chapter 8 and verse 14 excuse me it says um now when the apostles who were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent peter and john to them okay now this is uh, i think we know this right we have studied this So, um uh, are you are you learning about uh, the book of acts and paul right now finished already missionary journeys you know book of acts and life of paul not yet okay so you anyway you do a thorough study but in this when we see we see that uh, samaria who went to samaria to share the gospel philip so samaria is already you know i mean at least most of them had accepted the lord you know so the church was st- started there etc now the peter and john the apostles here in jerusalem that samaria had received the gospel so um uh, the word of god so they sent peter and john to samaria so what did peter and john do when they go to samaria yeah so yeah so this is the first thing that they do so they were all already believers so verse 15 when they had come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy spirit for as yet he had fallen upon none of them they had only be baptized in the name of the lord jesus so they laid hands on them and they received the holy spirit so this was something that the early church did right that they introduced them to the baptism of the holy spirit and ministered to them and uh, they received the holy spirit okay so it is not left to chance they were very intentional about it okay let's look at um, acts chapter uh, 19 okay acts chapter 19 you know several other places we know acts chapter 10 and um, you know uh, acts chapter 9 also acts chapter 19 this is uh, the church at ephesus right so when it uh, verse 1 acts chapter 19 and verse 1 and it happened while apollos was at corinth that paul having passed through the upper regions came to ephesus and finding some disciples so that means that he found some people who were followers of the lord jesus they were disciples right? finding some disciples what did he do he said to them did you receive the holy spirit when you believed you know that seems like a question yeah obviously how else could i live as a believer right 
uh, but he his question was something else right so they said to him look at this they said to him we have not so much as heard whether there is a holy spirit okay um and he said to them into what then were you baptized so they said into john's baptism um and then on and on and then verse 6 and when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay, there were about twelve of them. So, so, so this is something that we see again. So here were disciples, and um, they had not heard about the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we can say, okay, it was those times. Um, you know, maybe they didn't have the understanding, maybe they didn't have the teaching, and so on. So now we don't have any excuses, right? We have the understanding, we have the teaching. It's it's. Um, very prevalent and so on. Okay, so quite recently also, I was talking to uh, uh, you know some people, and then their understanding was that, well, when we believe Jesus, when we when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit is indwelling us, and that was enough, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and so that was the understanding. So again, you know, the the teaching that. The baptism or infilling of the Holy Spirit—it's not something very complex, very simple. But yet, they did not have that understanding. Okay, so to be spirit-filled—that's one thing, you know. Where, since we know, and we have we have had that experience, we teach others as well. Okay, and this is an important qualification, right? Why? Huh? Yeah, but why? Sorry, giving? Yeah. Shows the power. Hmm. Yeah, so, so the Lord's desire is that we be clothed with power. Okay, and the power expression of power. When you say power, it's not like wow, no. <laughs> and then the whole thing breaks. You know, so the power is for life transformation, and the expression of the power or expression of Holy Spirit, uh, the way He expresses Himself is through the gifts, right? gift of faith, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, healings, miracles. You know, all those things. So, the Lord Jesus wants us to give witness um, or bear witness to Him. In these in these ways with power that be yeah. Some of the people uh, like the Christians from years and years and so they don't have this uh, Holy Spirit baptism experiences. Yeah. But but they they actually have this faith word of knowledge they do healings miracles mm. and they don't know uh, this understanding and this, they don't have they don't even True. have this. Uh, Holy Spirit baptism experience. Then what, uh, what about them? How how are they doing? Okay. So so okay. So the, so the question is okay. They, they what about people who do not have the Holy Spirit baptism experience? Um, but how, how do we come to that conclusion? Uh, in in our uh, our state, I mean, most of the pastors who are in villages, uh, so they don't have the experience of Holy Spirit baptism, and they they what they think is Holy Spirit baptism is something that uh, be, that that happens for some people, mm. it won't be happen for everyone. But they but the ministries were really very big, yeah. and they don't preach this Holy Spirit baptism also. They will not, but teach. they do miracles in the name of Jesus. Right, right, right. Okay, so so the thing is this, you know, um, so when you say they did not have Holy Spirit baptism, are you saying that they don't pray in tongues, or uh, the expression of correct, correct. expression? Yeah, but expressing through word of knowledge, healings, miracles, and right, right. But what they are telling is they don't have any Holy Spirit baptism. Yeah, so that is the question, you know, how do they know that they are not filled with the Holy Spirit? Hmm. And Holy Spirit baptism is different, right, Pastor? Yeah. So how do they know that they are not baptized in the Holy Spirit? So it can happen in an instant. Yeah. By not knowing also. Yeah. You know, they, they know. In the sense, they might not see. when it, it is like this, you know. For example, when a person is born again, okay, uh, now they may not have the language to express that they are born again. They know that, hey, I love Jesus. Jesus means something to me. But they have not been in that environment 
where people have said, okay, are you born again? Suppose you ask them the question, are you born again? Now they will talk about the day when they were baptized. Okay. Yeah, I, I got baptized. No, the, the question is, you know, when was it that you received? Did you pray and receive? Um, I really don't know. But then, uh, you know, but I, I love Jesus. They don't know when they actually received Jesus into their heart. Right. When it happened, you know, was it a powerful moment? Was it a significant moment? Did they feel anything? Uh, did something happen to them? They can't say. Okay. Like, for example, in my life. Now, I don't know when I received the Lord. I don't know. I, I Just that, you know, I got interested. I was reading the Word. I found the questions um, that I had, uh, you know, in the Word. The Lord was leading me. So I really don't know when I accepted the Lord as. I didn't pray, like, Lord, come into my heart. You know, so, so that same way, Holy Spirit baptism also, you know. Now we are teaching intentionally and saying this. I remember at a time when um, if just a friend and my, myself, we were praying. Um, it was on a Saturday evening. We were praying. And we started, you know, praying, intens praying intensely. Something happened. I knew that, you know, it was a different kind of experience altogether. Because we were praying for, by the time we finished praying, it was about three hours. Okay. Was I praying in tongues? No. But did something different happen powerfully internally? Yes. So, uh, so I didn't pray in tongues. I didn't. I didn't have any of the other gifts of the spirit. But I knew for a fact that I was, I was filled with the spirit. It, because I can remember that day, something happened very powerfully on the inside. So that's why I'm asking. You know, the pastors could have that. Kind of an experience. Like I, I was remember talking to a Methodist pastor where he uh, he said he was in Bible college and uh, he was they did not teach about this, but but he said, Lord, I want everything that you have for me. And he prayed and he said that you know this whole room lit up and he had this experience where he was just you know being touched by God, filled by God. He had this, he was crying, and you know, and then he the uh, did he? He didn't speak in tongues, but the fact is that he felt that something was very different. It was a powerful experience in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Yeah. So praying in spirit is not only about praying in tongues, but what we used to tell in this through the scriptures in in the yeah. whole last semester before semester. Yeah, yeah. It is so one of the in, basic. Yeah, praying yes. in spirit is mm -hmm. in praying in tongues. We used to yeah, learn. yeah, absolutely. So, uh, how um, can I say like I can I can pray in spirit without tongues? See no, how no, you no. told. No, no, no. We can't say that. <clears throat> we can't say that I'm praying in because when you look at scripture, scripture is very clearly saying that praying in the spirit is praying in tongues. That's the understanding. Wherever the usage is, like how we studied, wherever the usage praying in the spirit is, is referring to praying in. Tongues. Paul very clearly distinguishes. I pray with the spirit. I pray with the understanding. So what is the thing? I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying with the. I'm singing with the spirit. I sing with the. Sing with the understanding. So that distinction is very clear. No, all I'm saying is that, you know, we could have an understanding that this gift is. If God wants to give me, He will. I will not intentionally pursue. I will not step into by faith. Uh, I might have an urge to, you know, speak out, but then I will not because of my wrong understanding. I will not get or step into the, uh, you know, specifically I'm talking about gifts of the tongues, gift of tongues. But maybe other gifts like word of knowledge, word of wisdom, even prophecy. You know, I sense that, oh, this is I, oh, visually, you know, something God is showing and I just, you know, share that. And it's, yeah. Yeah. So but is, no, but is this okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. yeah. Is there we need a time or event to just uh, to just baptize in Holy Spirit and fire, or like how you said, we can may receive uh, unknowingly, but we don't know. We don't have that understanding, or we need a particular instance or a particular event or a particular time mm. to just receive, sit and ask, like how we used to do used to, yeah. Holy Spirit baptism right, one day. Right. Right. So. See, very clearly, it is a significant moment. It's a particular moment. 
in time right we see right through scripture that there is something that happened but because of our you know how it happened over the years uh, because of our lack of understanding or even because of a lack of teaching wrong understanding whatever we don't we are not in a place or maybe we're not in the you know that kind of a teaching where we don't recognize what has happened to us like for example if there was someone who had who had told me hey you know why don't you just pray out i'm sure that you the lord is putting certain words you speak that out that is gift of tongues and what god is doing is you know it's the anointing is a baptism of the holy spirit you've received you know just thank god for it can let's continue i would have but unfortunately there was no one you know so the thing is we it is a different event it is something that you know that marks we know something happened something special happened something different happened maybe if, even if you ask these pastors they'll tell you you know there was something something special something happened but maybe they said they just put it aside as something that god is doing and not necessarily link it to baptism of the holy spirit that could be uh, you, asked, but, you went and asked uh, mm. So what they say is, you can use the mic. Uh, yeah. Me and God, who are you to say uh, like this? Uh, uh, that's a that's a different. Uh, we thing. have our yeah. own understanding with God. Mm -hmm. It's it's nothing wrong. So I was when I was showing these scriptures, they're telling like, no, it's understanding between me and God. They were talking. Uh, about. And I, I didn't fully understand. So uh, when you told so them what? when we, when we are when we are speaking in uh, praying in spirit. Uh -huh. What they are telling is, we also pray in spirit only, but may not in tongues. So when they say when they are praying in spirit, what do they mean by that? Uh -huh. Yeah, wholeheartedly, uh, filled praying with the, that, that, playing that, with the intensity. That feel will be there, like mm. Pastor, when we are praying that spirit. Yeah, they touching. know that spirit of God is doing something. Ah, yeah. yeah. See, that is fine. Absolutely, you know, we can say, okay, I am praying as led by the spirit of God. I am praying intensely. Uh, as led by the spirit of God. all that is fine but the 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 phraseology of you know all the semantics of praying in the spirit or praying with the spirit according to scripture is praying so we, we don't we don't have to you know we don't have to contradict them you're saying yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and and the lord see and the lord acknowledges the faith of the people right so, yeah they have they have the faith they, they they are living a sacrificial life they are they are you know sold out to jesus they live, they are, and they are share, speaking the word and the lord confirms the preaching of the word with signs and wonders and miracles yeah yeah, yeah sorry you were saying yeah like uh, like we know that uh, outpouring of like uh, when we are baptized with the spirit or when we are filled by the spirit we receive gifts yeah the lord releases gifts like we can only experience the gifts of the spirit when we are filled by the spirit mm. yeah 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 right. correct. Uh, so my question is like can a person like filled by the spirit and can't speak in tongues can it happen yeah yeah so so that's the thing it's the thing is see uh, and it can happen for various reasons right not uh, like it can be like my own understanding expectation okay uh, it's it's slightly different my own fears uh, all those reasons right um, and see my own understanding and expectation in the sense see i want it but my expectation of how it will happen is totally different you know it's like i'm going to keep my mouth shut or i'm going to be praying in some other language and still expect to start to you know, begin to speak in tongues and, and things like that so yeah it is possible yeah so, so uh, like speaking in tongues is not the evidence that the person is filled it's one of the things it's definitely one of the things See, like we studied, I'm sure we saw, <laughs> we saw Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, 
accepted 10, accepted 17. All these five instances point to the fact that something supernatural happened. And we can actually come to the conclusion that it was... Now, see, we're talking about a time after the Dark Ages. And we look at, you know, our... We were looking at a time, so uh, as a time when this whole thing was, the whole thing of preaching the gospel was in the, was not even there. This whole now the Lord is bringing that back through those different moves, right? As we see, um, uh, the move about the, uh, you know, coming back to receiving the Lord, salvation by faith, and, and one by one we see that, and then also the release of the 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 outpouring of the Spirit and understanding of the gifts of the Spirit. All that the Lord is restoring. So, so the thing is that, you know, people have grown up in different, let's say, church backgrounds with different emphasis. And so we come with different understanding, you know. But but that was not like that in the early church, right? So, so that's the thing. So that is why, yeah, so we have... You know all these different kinds of um, emphasis, and also, um, you know, these kind of situations that we have. If a person like moving in gifts of the spirit, yeah, but that person don't have the gift of tongues. Okay, but so obviously, like, if he have a gift of prophecy. Okay. When he's going to give a prophecy, like he should, he will be like, we, sh we will be depending on God, mm -hmm. on the Holy Spirit, right. and we will be uh, praying, right? Like, right. okay, what you want me to do, what you want me to go and speak. Yeah. So at that time, they, they, were, they were praying to God, they were praying right. to the Spirit. So is it not praying in the Spirit because they're going to do the gifts of the Spirit? They're going to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. So what they're going to pray before that, is it not considered as gift of the Spirit? Like praying in Spirit? According to the Bible, no. <laughs> See, <laughs> so that's the thing, no. According to the... So I don't think we should get caught up in the usage. See, they are seeking God's heart. They want God's best for the people. They want God to use them. They want God to reveal their heart and speak through them. And they are praying. They are praying in line with God's heart. We can't, we should not say they are praying in the spirit. That's the only thing. Yeah. So it would be, it would be, because when you look at 1 Corinthians 14, it's very clear what Paul is saying, praying in the spirit. And uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Hmm. So we, we receive gift of the spirit. Okay. We we pray in we pray in spirit. And one of the points it will come like so God will use us in particular gift, especially like when it comes to me, he'll hmm. use me in particular gift. When it comes to Prince, he'll use him. So okay. what about that? See, uh, i I have this gift of prophecy or I have the gift of uh, word of knowledge. So I'll be more, I mean, I'll be more explored into this field of knowledge, word of knowledge. Mm. I may be not more uh, explored in this uh, gift of tongues mm. and gift of prophecy. So what about that? And the other thing is when I, uh, I came from this preaching only from start in the static. So when I came here, I got to know all these scriptures. And when you told, I asked you personally also one of the time. I got I got clarified and I was satisfied. Right. When I went and so we uh, so when in this, in this three months I spoke to so many pastors, okay. good ministries. So what they used to tell is then why you are not you are not you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are praying in spirit means you have to pray in tongues. So what they, then what about the, all the ministry we are doing? What about the, all the things we are doing? Yeah. So they will tell like that. We are no, 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 what about in the sense? Is it of Holy Spirit or not? No, I, I used to tell like when when we are praying in spirit, uh -huh. we have to pray in tongues. Uh -huh. So when I when I when I told mm. like this, they were like in a different way. Yeah, so so God gave me word of knowledge. Then yeah. watch our pra <laughs> Yeah. So what is your question again? <laughs> Sorry. This what what my first point is this when this coming to gifts of spirit, God God using me in gift of knowledge. Okay. Okay, so we come back to uh, that 
again that foundational uh, thing that the gifts of the spirit are an expression of the spirit okay it's a manifestation that's that's why we read no 1 Corinthians 12 uh, first chapter itself we see that this is a manifestation expression of the holy spirit so these are with the holy spirit everything belongs to the holy spirit this is a manifestation expression of the holy spirit so who has come who releases that within us the holy spirit okay so that is why we say every believer can in faith manifest all the expressions of the holy spirit okay that's uh, that's a given because the holy spirit is the one who expresses we uh, because so that's one thing we express we desire we expect and the holy spirit moves through us okay and then we saw 1 corinthians 12 the last verse it says earnestly desire the best gifts desire best gifts plural okay then we come to chapter 14 and verse 1 pursue love and desire spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy okay and and we looked at so which means that god's desire will is that we walk in the gifts of the spirit all the gifts of the spirit not not just one now, having said that, we know that the fivefold Ephesians 4, the fivefold ministry, now we've completely gone away from preaching, <laughs> biblical <laughs> preaching. Uh, the fivefold ministry is for certain people and not all. Okay. Now, if you're called to be an apostle, it's it's not uh, it's not something that I you know, uh, I choose, but God chooses that apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Now we know that along with that fivefold, along with that call, there are certain gifts that will operate like uh, uh, in a greater frequency, in a greater level of accuracy, and a greater degree of influence. Like for a prophet, we know that it won't be a simple word, gift of prophecy, which brings exhortation, edification, and comfort. It could be more than that. It could be, it'll have more of that aspect of foretelling. Okay. And the word of knowledge functioning. And we also know, like when we see scripture, that it will also have governmental authority. Right. Uh, while, yes, within the four walls of the local church, yes, the gift of prophecy will function. But when it's an apostolic, or, or sorry, when it's a fivefold ministry call, we know that it's it has governmental uh, uh, authority also. How do we know that? We see, you know, Agabus and all other you know, New Testament prophets. We see that they were announcing the move of God. This is what is happening in the region. This is what is, you know, and so on. So, so we know that. Right? So that is why certain gifts operate very powerfully, or you know, in greater deg degree of level of accuracy frequency because the the call is like that right for a pastor then it could be you know word of wisdom word of knowledge word of wisdom uh, to a greater degree uh, you know because it's it's more of a counseling kind of a situation or it could be you know grounding people in the word and so on so yeah so we'll see more of that um, you know working so but that, does, that shouldn't really, um, um, you know, restrict us from desiring spiritual gifts. Right? That is that is a given for all believers. Right? But we see the Lord leading us, so that is the thing. So, yeah. So while we while we are studying this, you know, we slot it into categories and study it. But then we know when God moves, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's these gifts overlap, and so that His will and purpose is done. Right. And uh, I remember one of the one of the students, you know, asking me the question. You know, they come from uh, from Kohima, I think. Yeah, so saying, you know, we have people in our church. It's a Presbyterian church. Uh, Presbyterian church doesn't, you know, not normally teach about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, etc. Believes in more of a cessationist kind of a you know theology. So they're saying we have people in our church. You know, some of these old uh, grandmothers are there, and they prophesy. Right, the the word of knowledge, very accurate word of knowledge, and you know, how is that possible? They've not been taught about, you know, this is the thing, right? So, yeah. Any other 
questions okay so spirit filled very important very scriptural right um what about spirit taught why are we saying that a person must be spirit filled and spirit taught okay <laughs> that's a okay so anand has said we should know what to speak what not to speak absolutely yeah so the so the thing is when you're, when you're saying spirit taught to so be saying that yes god has given us wisdom god has given us knowledge god has given us a mind sharp mind where we can use our minds and but we know that our minds must be renewed by the word of god plus the spirit of god gives us revelation understanding so i need to know i need to rely on the holy spirit i need to be led by this because the the lord jesus very clearly said he, the holy spirit will teach you and remind you of the things that i taught he will lead you he will guide you into all truth so if i'm going to block out that aspect or if i'm ignorant of that aspect then i'm going to block out a greater part of the revelation that the holy spirit wants to give me the deeper truths that he wants to lead me and that is very important that constant receiving of revelation and you know teaching of that uh, is very important so spirit filled spirit taught in other words being spirit led right okay okay we'll stop here okay thank you thank you so much online students god bless bye bye